I'm Todd Bookspan, and welcome to your neighborhood real estate show. The Hyperlocal Real Estate Show, <laughs> where real estate professionals talk about the neighborhood you live in, <laughs> or the neighborhood you want to live in. This episode is brought to you by HomeBuyerUniversity.net, your free comprehensive guide to buying or refinancing your home. Click over to HomeBuyerUniversity.net to get started online today. Hey everyone, I'm Todd Bookspan and welcome to another episode of Your Neighborhood Real Estate Show. I am super excited to meet my new friend, Beth Cook with West USA Realty. Welcome back. Hi, how are you doing today? I'm doing so good. So I feel like the, our biggest challenge today is going to be to, to have a concise conversation because I think you and I could talk for the next six hours. I think you're right about that. All right. Or so, listen to each other. Well, I, I absolutely, absolutely. I know you're a listening <laughs> specialist, so you threw me off there. Uh, right. We have two ears and one mouth for a reason is what my kids remind me of. Yes, but we like to use both. Sometimes one more than the other, right? Absolutely, absolutely. So I always want, want to hear how people fell into real estate, and you, you know, you've got such an interesting background. You've lived a lot of places. You have um, had different careers along the way, not just one. And so, what, what, you know, kind of talk about how you started and how you got into real estate. Well, I had a really good mentor. He was my mentor back in the '80s, which kind of ages me, but yeah, it is what it is. It gives me a little. It's experience. my favorite music still. A little spice. So. Um, and I love people. I've always been a relationship salesperson. And he said, the relationship that you create when you deal with somebody getting a home is so interesting and integrated. It's crazy. I tell my clients when I meet them, I'm in your life for the rest of your life, like it or not. So if you don't want somebody that's going to be there from the birth to the death, don't come with me because I'll be there. Knock at your door and bring your donuts and let you know how things go. But it's been an interesting journey from HR and construction and seeing what happens when people's home lose their home for fire or flood to just being able to look at how it can help somebody improve their value and, and their bottom line and their confidence. It's crazy what owning a home can do. I love it. I've interviewed so many people. No one's ever said it gives you confidence, but you know, obviously I totally agree with it because I feel like... Um, you just feel so much different when it's a place of your own and you can paint the walls whatever colors you want. You can, you know, do whatever you want. And, and you yeah. call it mine. Yeah. You know, it's kind of like the kid with the toy. We get it. It's mine. And it's not in a bad way. It's in a, this is the pride. And you just watch it beam. I had a first time home buyer just a couple of weeks ago sign and I had forgotten how nervous they can be. Oh. And I'm watching him shake as he's signing his name. And it was just, he was so full of joy. And that's it. Isn't yeah. it? That's, just joy. I just love it. I just love it. So mentor tells you you'd be great in real estate and you just jumped in or were you hesitant? Just jumped in and went, yeah, I was hesitant. Um, school kind of scares you first. It's like, okay, nobody passes. Well, yes. But I think it's hard to create the unique you that you need to be. You need to be true to yourself in order to be successful and for people to trust you. And you hear all of these things, try this, try that. And it's all about what is your uniqueness to make you s special and make clients want to work with you. So I did a lot of open houses. Um, some of my first clients I've done multiple transactions with, but I met them all at open houses. I knew one person when I moved to Arizona, and now I feel like um, I work almost solely on referral. And you get to know their livelihood, their families their ups, their downs, their tragedies, and their wins, and you just stand by them with it for the whole thing. Yeah, I just love it. I feel like you've got that opportunity to be a big part of their life, right? You actually, that first-time homebuyer, you change their life forever. Right, right. Uh, one of my favorite first-time homebuyers are in Maricopa, and she just sent me a picture. We have a pool now. We, we just feel so excited that we have everything our family needs to exist and to grow within this home and it's that's what you that's what feeds us yeah i love it and so right now you know it's, it's oh, every market's interesting right and, mm -hmm. and i have people say it's a crazy market i don't like the word crazy i think it's just a unique and interesting market and so buyers right now are are kind of nervous i think a lot of them have you know traumatic stress from the last couple of years where you know they were saw houses you know being sold for way over asking price they saw um, you know, stuff be on the market and be gone like that. And they just, you know, they've heard horror stories or maybe they tried to buy a house and didn't. So how are you talking to buyers in the current market? 
Well, you just have to listen. What are their needs? Um, what are they spending? Why are they looking? Um, where are they looking? Is it for improvement? Um, and talk to them a little bit about everything changes. This too shall pass. You know, yeah. the high interest rates. We're watching some of our appreciation come down just a little. But we're also watching our, our income go up. You know, people say, well, my parents bought this in 1950 for that. Well, they also made 25 cents an hour, you know, <laughs> so it's kind of all relative. But just making sure that they know that you're there for the long run. And you can't push somebody into a decision. It has to be in their timeline and listening to them as far as what they're willing to do and, and how you can help them get there. Um, buy downs for some of your listings and your sellers getting them to understand what that means because it's kind of like the hot topic now. And yep, what's old is new again. Exactly. It, it's so funny because being not being in the real estate industry during the downturn, I don't have that trauma. I don't have that angst. I just feel like it's just doing your business day to day to make sure you're taking care of your clients and that they understand what's going on. And how do you work with them for their challenges? Because it's not about us. It's about them and their journey. Well, yeah, and you said it. It's why are they moving? Where do they need to move to? And it's, it's a matter of this picture in time because you can't rewind certainly to last year, certainly not to the 50s when their parents bought a house. And it's just a matter of here's the market that we're in. And then maybe an expert like you to walk them through it versus to, to separate out the emotion from the facts oftentimes. Yeah, and I think, um, so a lot of my clients are people that came to Arizona for a better life and for the sunshine, of mm -hmm. course, you know, that's one of our number one things. And uh, there's a 267 mile route that I can go on that shows them the valley in the entirety. Um, oh, holy smokes, let me write that down, keep talking. <laughs> it's kind of fun because all of the different areas have different personalities. Um, if you want nightlife, you know, what kind of nightlife do you want? Do you want a ranch where you have space? Do you want, um, Rado where you're going and there's the community pool and the community sense in the small town? Do you want Australia where you can be where the fountains are and you still have that small town, but it's more mountainy, um, to Gilbert where Gilbert has different personalities in and of itself or old Mesa versus new Mesa versus Eastmark. You've just got so much different opportunities to let them see. So when we pick an area, I usually tell clients that are moving from out of town, go to lunch, picnic somewhere within the community that you want to live. That will give you a better idea of what's going on in the community. And it'll give you an understanding of maybe is traffic busy? Is this done? Because we really want to make sure whatever decision we help them with is the right decision and a long-term decision because it's a lot of stress to go through to buy a home. It is. And I like the whole of it being a long-term decision, although we do see people, you know, see people move. I've got people who bought during this craziness and have super low interest rates who are now like, well, my life has changed, right? I've got another kid or I've got a job that's over here and, and have a different reason for needing to make that change. And so I always find it's fascinating that some people are so narrow focused and say, this is exactly what I want. And other people need your 267 mile tour to figure it out. <laughs> I have one of my favorite clients, they were from Canada and um, we were in Gilbert and at three o'clock in the afternoon, he's going like this. I'm like, I'm like, What's going on? And she said, it's scotch time. <laughs> and I, I went, like, what? At that time, I, was, I didn't know what to expect. <laughs> and at 3 o'clock, he loves to sit and have a cigar and scotch. And he's, she said, well, where's your closest scotch bar? I said, honey, you don't need to be in Gilbert. You need to be in Scottsdale. If this is what he's looking for, how do we get him to where he wants to be? And they loved Scottsdale. They wanted, he wanted to be able to walk to a scotch bar and have a cigar. And that's what we did. Well, you know, it's funny because oftentimes in the show we're talking about, you know, something super local and you're like, well, I'm just an expert in listening and I know everywhere. So now that I know the 267 mile story, <laughs> um, you know, it, it totally, it totally makes sense. And I think that, um, you know, you've got the other side of the coin. So you've got the buyer right now, you talked about rates and buy downs. So, so if people don't know, I mean, the buy down would be literally just taking money and buying a lower interest rate. Um, and there's options on that. But what about the seller side then? So what is this? How is it? How are you approaching with sellers in this market? Um... Just a lot of, of realistic conversations. I think we still have a lot of sellers out there that think that they can put the market, the house on the market for a higher number. And looking at what um, their process is. Are they trying to move in 30 days? Are they trying to move in six months? 
what's the reasoning for the move and getting the house on the market staged correctly professional pitches please um i think we do a disservice to our clients when we can't shortcut them uh and if that means getting an appraisal or doing super professional pictures drones depending on where it's at you really need to look at the home and the person as a whole still it's the same thing just a different scenario uh if they need to go in a hurry okay here's what the comps say here's where i think we're at Let's look at the whole neighborhood. Let's go to open houses that are in your neighborhood before we put it on the market. Um, what are things that we might need to do to the home, such as cleaning or changing pictures or whatever, before we stay, get the home on the market and stage it a little bit in the aspect that it looks like somebody else, not just what you wanted it to look like. I love that you bring that up because I think people forget that like, but it's my home and this is why I love it. But it's the whole idea of making sure that the person who's walking in the door can see it as their home and that they can love it just as much. So do people give you pushback when you say, hey, I don't think you can have this picture here? Oh, yeah. And they, but I like that. That's true. It's beautiful for your personality, but not a lot of people want a pink flamingo in the front yard, not, you know, in, and it's not that direct, right. but you just have to be comfortable in, in saying this is now a business transaction. It was your home. It's now your house. Yep. Make they that can. mental awareness of it changes. And then they're usually fine with it. And people just want somebody to care. Communication through any of these processes is huge. I have Monday updates. Doesn't matter if anything's happened or not. I give them a letter of what's going on, both buyers and sellers, and this is how many homes are on the market, this is what's happened, and I think having conversations. And like I said, I love my clients. I called on yesterday and I just said, I haven't heard from you in a couple of days, so I'm just bugging you. He goes, well, I was feeling unloved, you know? <laughs> so you can just kind of have to have fun with it. Yeah. And you just have to, you got to care. It's got to be what your personality is too. Well, I think that's, you know, a whole, a whole, part of what I love about these kinds of conversations. I feel like people go onto the internet, they see what's, you know, a, a website or they see a video and it doesn't really give the, the story behind the person. No. And I think that the story behind the person is, um, I made my tagline, um, blazing trails to the homes of your dreams because I am a redhead and I can be a little spicy, which means I'll fight for my clients to the nail to make sure we've, we've done the right thing. And sometimes I'll say, that's not, probably not the right decision for you. Have you looked at this? You know, I would love to sell you this home, but here's some things that are concerning to me. And I think for some people, that's not the right fit. For my clients, um, that's why they like me, because I'm honest and upfront. This is what I see are concerns already. And I really want them to feel comfortable where they're at. I think that's really important. I mean, for people listening, you know, I don't think that they always know that, you know, Oftentimes, you know, your the realtor is a salesperson, and so therefore they don't realize that they're they like the house. They're going to say, well, "Great, boom, this is the one." And I, what I heard you say is, "Well, I'm going to tell them, yeah, they may love this house, but here's the other things you need to be aware of." So you're going to get them to think about it, right? Because you care more about their long term success than just closing the transaction. My worst transaction was a, a couple that moved from Chicago, and I love them dearly. And she walked into the house and hadn't seen it, and she said, "I hate this," and it made my heart sink. And I was like, okay, then we'll, let's, you bought the home. Do you want to put it on the market tomorrow? No. And now she loves the house. But her initial thought process was, um, because it was a big difference from what she was coming to. And she wasn't prepared for the difference. And I think we, we also have to prepare them for that. Different neighborhoods and different homes feel different to different yeah. people. And when you've lived, especially some of our older population, when you've lived somewhere for a long time, not knowing how to get to the grocery store is a big deal. So maybe even taking them and showing them, okay, you love to do what? Okay, here's where you can find that. Here's where you can find this. And always call me because I can help you figure it out. I may not know everything, but I can help you to the best restaurant. may not know everything, but you certainly know a lot. <laughs> you try to. And then if you don't know it, you go find out. Um, there's always an opportunity. I didn't know anything about Casa Grande and pulling electrical and wells. And I had a client that wanted to buy land there. And I said, thank you for the opportunity to, to let me learn with you. But here's some of our pitfalls and here's some of our joys. Yeah. 
Well, that's, I love it that you're not afraid to learn something new. <laughs> every day, whether it's about myself or about for my clients. Yes, every day. All right. So let's go back to this whole area. So you have this 267 mile route. So again, normally we're talking about somewhere specific in town. So what are, what are a, like a place or two that you really love here in Maricopa County? Oh, um, I love Ahwatukee because to me, it still seems like a bedroom community. All um, right. So someone doesn't know where's Ahwatukee. Like they fly in the land in Sky Harbor. How do you get to Ahwatukee? Look, look for the towers and go to the other side of the mountain. <laughs> <laughs> so just south of town. Just south of town, and I like it because it's centrally located. If you need to get on the airplane, it's 20 minutes pretty much anywhere in Ahwatukee. It's some um, older homes, so they're not a lot of new builds, but they have character, a little bit bigger yards. Um, I love Gilbert or Galvesta Lakes because I love the sense of community. That yeah. place just, I mean, with their rec center, you don't find communities that are built like that. Um, and... But uh, Queen Creek, uh, I've watched it grow in the last six years tremendously, but they're still all about community. Let's do community nights and events, and if somebody wants that, they're just, every place has its different little personality. It's, uh, you know, if you want to go shopping, you've got Old Town and then you've got North Scottsdale. You know, it's just so different. I have some clients that want North Scottsdale, but they want to be next to the mountains. Um, Fountain Hills has a different feel to it a little more um, elegant or classy and it just depends. So that's almost every corner of the city. So you, I know, also have a place up in Payson. So Payson yes. is, you know, I would call it northeast of the valley. Is that an accurate way to, to describe Yeah, it? it's northeast and we bought there. Um, Randy, my other half, is from, he went to college in Prescott and we looked at Prescott, but I hate to say this, but I don't like Highway 17. It gets so backed up. And oh, yeah. we wanted some place to go to the mountains because we love to mountain bike and hike. And I just love nature. There's something that releases stress about just being in the quiet of nature. So we looked at Payson, and we found a cute little A-frame. But Payson is unique. It has A-frames that are 1,200 square feet, and then it has multi-million dollar houses. Yesterday I was mountain biking up towards some really big homes and their mansions, but they have the mountains behind them. They have the peace, the views, the whatever. And you deal with a whole bunch of different things. I have my license up there as well there than you do here. Um, you have granite that is, um, oh God, what's it? it crumbles. So you have houses that are sold on jacks. And the reason why they're sold on jacks is when the water comes underneath the home, they have to stabilize it. So it's tilted one way or another. Never heard that in all my years. See, like yes. this is what I love. And I've actually financed a lot of homes up in Payson, but no one's ever said their yes. house was on jacks. Yes. Um, that was an interesting one because we had it inspected and they said this house is probably stabler than most. Um, but it does have cinder blocks underneath it and jacks on, on to keep it stabilized and to keep it level. Right. So it's not on a slab. We're used to everything being torn on a slab. Or, you know, crawl spaces. What do you do with a crawl space? You know, do you have an attic up there? And then you've got city water and city sewer up there, but you also have a lot of homes that are on septic, and then you have to watch out for cesspools. Um, finding out that there's different kinds of granite and different kinds of ways to get rid of waste. Yeah. I mean, that sounds terrible, but it's... Um, you have to make sure you know those things for your client. What kind of soil are you getting into? Can you build a fence? Is it going to be granite? Um, what if you want to put a pergola in the backyard? Are you looking at digging into granite or is there is it actual clay? What are you working with in your soil? So just trying to make sure people understand that because you can have everything from a backyard like mine that you look at the elk to... Right, you saw this picture of the elk and you got a friend with 14 points on each side that has a name oh, yeah. and everything. Big Ben, yeah. So you have that, but it also has a small town feel. I mean, they just have the local fair. We've gone to, I've gone to more rodeos in the last three years than I've gone to in my life because it's all about community. You get to know people. The um, airport restaurant is a fun way to watch the airplanes land, and it's just a great place to watch people and meet people. So it's, again, another little community that if you want to get away, it's an hour and 15 minutes from Gilbert, an hour and 20 minutes from Tempe. It's a great place to go. It's a little cooler. It's a lot cooler. A lot cooler. Yeah, yesterday our high, I think, was 82. So it's about 15 to 20 degrees cooler. And in the wintertime, it's a lot cooler. So we've had to plow snow more than once. Well, and there's, and there's, besides the nature, there are gated communities where you can oh, go yes. in there and have all the amenities. My father-in-law lived there for a while, and so I went up there and we went up to the little 
Chef Golf World Club Wine, they the golf clubs, and, yes. Yeah. And they have some really cool restaurants. I mean, it has something for everyone. Again, it's listening to, do you want an acre that you can build a house that sees nobody, or do you want to live in a nice gated community that has amenities? Because some of the amenities in Chaparral Pines and um, the golf club are amazing. So again, it's what are you looking for? Finding that out from your clients, but just knowing there are options. And then on the way up, you have you can go through Saguaro Lake, or you can go up through just 87 and past Roosevelt, and then. 30 minutes from there, you've got five lakes, Woods Canyon Lake, Willow Springs, Black Canyon Lake. If you want to go be somewhere where you can pretend you're not in Arizona or you want to get away from the heat, it's beautiful. Yeah, we loved it. We got to go sliding up there. I think the thing that, that surprised me the most was I went up there in high school and uh, had a classmate who did a house up there, and, and we all went up there one weekend. And um, What I was blown away with was the stars. Um, you oh. don't realize living in Phoenix all you know, all through my youth that you know we just don't get to see the sky the same way because of all the lights. And I was just so blown away when I saw that. So there's a um, place called Houston Mesa. So you go um, up 87, past the 260 where you'd turn off to Sholo and, and uh, Eber. And it's the second turn uh, roundabout. And if you just go up about four miles it's on its way have you been to water wheel and the no, uh, oh my gosh the waterfalls your kids i don't know you want to they're older kids. now 20 but in but about. they would still love the the waterfalls and being able to jump into the water at water wheel it's incredible but there's a flat plane that you'll watch people start pulling over at dusk just to lay on your blanket and watch the stars and see the milky way and just it's incredible. Yeah, it's so funny because it just—I hadn't thought about that in so long. What a different, what a different experience that is from living in the city. It is, and we, what Arizona has to, to people that are from somewhere else is everything. You can go to Tucson, and you can go to the Karchner Caves, and you can go to Mount Lamone, you can go to Grand Canyon North or South, and see all these beautiful things. Horseshoe Bend, Antelope Canyon. I mean, I'm an explorer, so I've been hiking all of these wonderful places and it's warm and people are friendly because we're all kind of from somewhere else. Yeah. So we're it a great makes melting pot. We're a great melting pot, which means our conversations are, so where are you originally from? And how can I get to know you? And how can I understand what you need by yeah. having that conversation? So well, that's that part of listening. And it's I think it's fun that we're a melting pot except for if you're a sports fan and you go to an Arizona sporting event. <laughs> Half the crowd's cheering for the visiting team. Other than that, it's a lot of fun. Or you buy tickets to the Sun Devils, and you're like, you got first first row seats on the forty yard line for a hundred bucks, and you're like, where am I? <laughs> yeah, it's a little crazy. So, um, if people want to find you, it's BethRealAZ.com. Yes. So just that's pretty straightforward. Beth yeah. Real, like real estate, but BethRealAZ.com. What? Yeah. What else? I know we could talk for hours. What else? Is there some other thing that we should make sure we talk about before we wrap up? Not really. I think that, you know, life is a journey and buying a home or selling a home is a journey and keeping that in perspective. All journeys have bumps. All journeys have excitement, highs and lows. But your professional, whether it be your lender, your title person, or your realtor, are there to help you through that roller coaster on that journey. We're here to hold your hand. And that's what makes us professionals is we know how to get through those and can help you. So I think that's super important to let our clients know that. Well, I think that's a perfect way to wrap it up because I have no doubt that if <laughs> someone who wants to come along the journey, uh, learn from someone who loves the outdoors and has seen all the different places, because I laugh when you mentioned all Antelope Canyon and all those different places. <laughs> those are places I went on field trips when I was with my kids in school. <laughs> and I'm like, oh yeah, those are places I need to get back to to hike. So I appreciate you taking us for the journey, not just through the 267 mile route through through Maricopa Cope County, but through the rest of the state. And I encourage anyone who's looking to buy, whether it's down here in the Valley of the Sun or somewhere up north like Payson, to give you a call. Well, thank you. And I appreciate your time. All right. This episode's a wrap. Thanks, Beth Cook. You're welcome. Nice meeting you. This episode is brought to you by homebuyeruniversity.net your free comprehensive guide to buying or refinancing your home. Click over to homebuyeruniversity.net to get started online today.